this will be 10 things that you should know before you get a crested gecko. So I have Pepper here with me. Um, she's been on this channel for a while. I actually did a video when I first got her from, um, I got her from PetSmart a while ago. And she is about two years old, I wanna say. Um, she's full grown, so if you can see, she's pretty large, especially compared to her first video that I had her in. And these are 10 things that you should know before you own a crested gecko. I do have three geckos. Pepper is just one of those. All of mine are female. I don't have any male crested geckos. So the number one thing is that geckos do live for 15 to 20 years in captivity. So they can live a really long time, especially compared to some other lizards like bearded dragons. So when you're getting a crested gecko, make sure that you're aware of the long-term commitment associated with having them as pets. Number two, a nice thing about crested geckos is that they don't require live insects, like for example, a bearded dragon or a leopard gecko. Insects don't need to be a part of their diet necessarily, although it is good for them. Um, it does make healthier geckos and it also helps them grow faster if that's your goal for either breeding or maybe their babies. They do enjoy eating live insects if you offer them, but that's not required. This can save a lot of money, um, especially since they eat a pre-made um, food. It mostly consists of fruit, although there are options. Also include dried insects along with the fruit and the powder. Number three is that they're obviously very docile reptiles to keep. So Pepper did crawl around on my arm a little bit before this video, but for the most part, she's really cool. I haven't been great about handling her very often, and she's always really relaxed when I pick her up. Um, she always wants to try to climb something if it's available or maybe think about jumping around but she's never really a mean to me and she's never aggressive. She's never tried to bite me, she's never hissed at me. Sometimes with bearded dragons, even though they're really nice, sweet animals, eventually once they're a little more tamed, they will be a little bit fiery as babies, whereas crested geckos are more so just jumpy, but they have really good, calm personalities. Number four is that there are a ton of really beautiful morphs available out there. I personally um, cannot justify buying a morph that cost me so much money, um, especially when I was purchasing my crested geckos about two years ago. I also got some crested geckos off of Craigslist, so I took some geckos that were being rehomed, so I didn't really have that choice when I was picking from potentially a breeder, but there are really beautiful morphs available and I would highly encourage anybody to look at those. Another really cool thing regarding the crested gecko's look is that they have these beautiful eyelashes. These help protect their eyes since they don't have eyelids. They actually will clean their eyes by licking them. You might have seen Pepper do this throughout the video. It's a really cool thing about crested geckos. They aren't technically eyelashes, but they are there to serve as almost a protective shield for their eyes. Another thing you'll notice about Pepper is that she's dropped her tail. So as you can see, she has what they call a frog butt. This is pretty common to see in crested geckos. Actually, all of my crested geckos have dropped their tails. Two of them dropped them when I had them as babies and the other crested gecko had dropped her tail before I got her from Craigslist. So all three of mine don't have tails. It's pretty common if your crested gecko drops their tail, they don't grow these back. So that's something to be aware of, but don't feel bad if your crested gecko drops their tail it's pretty natural for them to do especially when they're babies number six is that you'll almost never see crested geckos so crested geckos are nocturnal and they're really good at hiding they love hiding in um, any plants you might have in a terrarium they really love to hide in high up places they like to be above everything else because they are arboreal so you might not see your crested gecko very often. And sometimes it's really hard to get them out of the tank if they are sleeping or if they're hiding somewhere very deep in the cage. You won't really see them or be able to grab them until they've come out of their hiding spot. And oftentimes that is towards the end of the day. Another thing to note is that their humidity requirements are pretty challenging depending on where you live. So I know that a lot of people would say that a crested gecko is one of the easiest reptiles to keep. However, I personally disagree. I live in Nevada where we have a very dry atmosphere and it's super hard to keep the humidity up for these guys. So in my case, I have to spray down their tank two to three times a day without fail. Um, otherwise their humidity would be off. In other cases though, if you were to live in Florida, you might never need to spray down your gecko's tank because the humidity will always be at the right percentage. So this is something to consider depending on where you live. If you live in somewhere that's a more arid, dry climate, it's gonna be harder to keep these guys. 
worses if you live in a more humid area, maybe like Florida, where really all you have to do is feed these guys once every day or once every other day, and you don't need to worry about those humidity requirements. Number nine is that you do have to teach them to be comfortable with humans. So as you can see, I've been handling Pepper for the past two years. As I mentioned, they are pretty docile, so you don't necessarily need to worry about them being aggressive towards you if you're not handling them often enough, but you do have to be conscious of the fact that they are going to try to hide and climb as fast as they can. So Pepper's pretty used to me here, but as you can see, she's trying to crawl up my arm because she wants to be higher than my head. And she also wants to find a good hiding spot like my hair. So she's trying to crawl into my hair as we're talking. But if I maybe handled Pepper less often than I do, she might be jumping all over the place trying to get away from me as fast as she can. And the other thing to consider is the younger the crested gecko is, the faster they'll move. So crested gecko when they're born or when you might find them at the pet store or from a breeder they can be really tiny and they will move so fast so please be aware of that this is a really hard animal to handle especially the younger it is or if you're not handling them often enough number nine like i mentioned these animals are nocturnal so you won't probably see them that often they will make some noise at night it also can be hard to tell sometimes if they're eating or not because you're not seeing them eat so this can be a little challenging when you want to make sure your crested gecko is healthy. They, again, don't have eyelids, so when they're sleeping during the daytime, you won't be able to tell. Um, their eyelids will just have a small, small pupil versus when they're awake, you can tell by their pupil being whiter. Number 10 is that they can actually cohabitate with one another. It is recommended to keep them separately, but they can cohabitate. For example, two females that I've had since babies did live together in the same cage for a long time before they finally reached maturity and I decided to separate them, but they can live in captivity together very easily. Be aware though, if you keep a male and a female together that they will breed and that the male can harass the female, especially during their breeding season. So I would warn against that. Unless of course you are trying to breed the crested geckos, I would recommend keeping males and females separately. But as far as keeping the same sex together, especially females, this should ultimately be fine as long as you're giving them enough space. Overall, these are 10 things that I've learned throughout having crested geckos. Again, I've had them for a few years now. I actually have three, including Pepper here. So I feel like I'm pretty experienced in crested gecko care and handling. So let me know if you guys have any other facts, tips, or tricks that you would like to share with new crested gecko owners about owning crested geckos. These are just 10 of mine, but I'm curious to hear yours in the comments. Be sure to like this video if you want to see more crested gecko content, and I hope to see you guys in the future. Bye.